welcome to the worship at the First Presbyterian Church near Ely. This day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad of it. Let us begin with a song we know on our hearts and hear together and sing together for the beauty of the earth that the words are printed in the Bible. Please stand and begin with this. Continue our prayer in the, using the words printed in the bulletin of confession and praise. Please join me. From the rising to the setting sun, you are God. We ask that you bring your spirit to chaos in our lives, within our souls, within our relationships, with our society. We praise you for those in our lives, God, peace, and righteousness. Those who have shown us by the example of an higher and a better in the morning of the Lord, forgive us when we when we are lacking determination, faithfulness, and integrity. Transform us with oil and mercy, and then help us to fall. Praise God, Creator, faithful, and as Friends, Hear the good news. Christ is here, came to teach, heal, and forgive those who needed his grace the most. And we are included in that. Know that we are forgiven and live in his peace. Amen. You may be seated, please.
second, second clue. This is a person who's a tax collector. Third clue, this is a person who cheated people out of their money. All right, now we're gonna get to the real specific clues. Here's a person who is very short. A person who was found up in a tree. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. All right, one more. Who am I? This is a person who was a teacher. This is a person who was a carpenter. This is a person who was the son of Mary. This is a person who is the son of God. You got to go with Jesus. So 
himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him, but to all who received him. with God. 
God and was God. So this is John's answer for us. Puts the answer to the question of Jesus' divinity right there. The Word. The Word itself participated in creation. Paul also makes this point. John is not alone in his thinking. Some of the earliest confusion was groups of people deciding that they were in different camps. And we have seen this in our day, too, when people bound, bound together by a certain thought or perspective build a fence around themselves. They have a hard time seeing the point of view of someone else. And we can look back on the 1600s and kind of shake our heads and say, oh boy, were they misguided. But we can see some of that around us, too. At that time, there was a group that says, Jesus is divine. End of story. There's nothing more to it. Any sort of claim of humanity is misguided. Another group said, Jesus was a step beyond and said, Jesus only appeared in a physical body. Jesus was only spirit and could not die and did not actually die on the cross. There's another group that argued that Jesus was completely human. That Jesus was created by God. Holy, yes, but divine, no. Well, with these circles encamped together, you can see how fights could break out. When John starts his gospel with the words, in the beginning, we see and we remind ourselves of Genesis 1. When God creates in God's own image. And calls it very good. Not only what is around us, but us too. Chapter 2 of Genesis focuses on God as creating humans out of the very dirt, the very topsoil of the earth. The sense of physical, of elements and minerals come together. And the spirit that goes in is the spirit of God that breathes the life. They are commanded to take care of things. They are commanded and reminded that they will never be equal to God, but very special. And in Jesus' life and teaching, didn't he teach these very things? Of stewardship, of care, of providing healing and hope. He was a great teacher and a great mentor. But beyond that, in his death and his resurrection, showed his humanity, showed his divinity, showed everything that he was, not only to God, but also to us. How we understand Jesus is important. We may have great differences in our understanding at a certain point of time. And we also know that as time goes by, our thoughts, our wisdom, our experiences teach us and we grow. A great historical missionary, E. Stanley Jones, once said, the Christian faith is not a set of propositions to be accepted. It is a person to be followed. So when we share the Apostles' Creed with one another, we say these words that are so, so ancient. These ideas, some seem very familiar, and these ideas, some see quite different and historical, not modern. We affirm that Jesus is God's Son, and we work on figuring out what does that mean in our lives day to day. In the good days when we have great joys and tears of happiness. And in terrible and desperate days when we feel an overwhelming sense of grief and tears of sorrow. We can hold true to the words that we say on Sundays, like the Lord's Prayer. And at this time, the Apostles' Creed. And ask for greater understanding 
greater experience and ask for greater grace for ourselves and for those around us. Let us recite it and let us live it. Please stand and let us say the Apostles' Creed together. Virginia's brother Wilbur, their son Bob as well. 
other announcements, joys, and concerns we'd like to share at this time? worship today, we do have a time of offering. Um, we're still not passing around the offering plate yet, but it is up front for you to use um, and contribute to at the end of the service. As we get back to our regular and uh, familiar order again, we pause to think about generosity, and we think about the generosity of others who have been so kind and good to us over the years, those who have provided for us a path of faith and understanding those in our lives who have answered our questions or at least sympathize with our questions. We thank God that we are part of the great story of faith for not only ourselves, but as we share with others. Today we lift up the uh, Lynn Community Food Pantry on this first Sunday of the month. We also lift up our collection of personal hygiene items 
here in this month of June for the Olivet Neighborhood Mission. We look around and we see the blessing of land, of field, of woods, of creek, of meadows, of one another. And we pray the prayer of offering that we've recited in recent days as we say again today together. Generous God, we offer our gifts and our lives. May the spirit in which they are given allow them to be free rather than to bind, to heal rather than to wound, and to serve the reign of the Lord of life. Amen. Let us sing together our familiar doxology. Please stand as you're able. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. The Lord will keep your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going from this point, from this point 